uh, before I launch into this, I just kind of want to explain what's going on. What I'm, since this is a developer meetup, I'm actually trying to replicate on a much smaller screen, of course, uh, pixel-wise, uh, actually how the development works. So um, what, what you kind of see a split screen here. Uh, usually, I, I often don't have the thing on the, on the right. That's actually just my phone. So this is literally just um, my phone. <laughs> so this, um, uh, and then this is, a, is an editor. So usually there's many editors, and you type the code in, and you see something happen on the other thing, on the other side. Uh, so um, I have been, I'm very new to Clojure, actually. Um, I don't know if a few months into it is new or old, but I have, um, I've only been using Clojure for about three or four months. I don't have a computer science degree. I kind of have everything, all the, Everything's stacked against me. However, um, I'm developing this really fast, um, which is great. So I'm going to, um, yeah, so it's, it's data-driven mobile app development. I'd like to acknowledge um, some people first, uh, my friends and family. Um, I met some of the people are here, actually. Um, the uh, new lab at the Brooklyn Navy Yard, um, Zago LLC, which is a great design firm, um, UI UX firm um, in town. Um, and then my colleagues, Niels, Jim, Lorinda, and Mike, um, who are not here, but I want to acknowledge them in case they see the video. And uh, of course, all of you. Um, and it's, um, you know, for me, just being on the IRC group and, you know, looking at all the various forums, it was, was really it, what got me from point A to point B. Um, so these are the things I'm going to talk about this evening. Um, just the, the motivations of why I'm doing this, um, the things that I researched in preparing to do this, um, the underlying technology which enables me to do this, um, and then a few more specific things which I'll discuss later. Um, so why did I want to do mobile development differently than firing up Xcode and, you know, writing up a binary or firing up the specific tools for Android. Um, why did I make my own thing? Um, and there's a few reasons. Um, one is this, I've been doing mobile development for a long time, and you have this thing where you, you write the code and you compile it into an image or a binary, then you have to send it to your phone, then it has to boot up, and then you're kind of in the same state every time you boot up. You have to write some kind of script to get it somewhere else, you, have, you sort of have to start over every time you want to see a change in what you're doing. Um, so what, uh, one thing that just is natural with Clojure, and I think one thing that draws a lot of people to it, is its dynamic capability. So you can kind of see what you're working on while you're working on it. Um, so there's, um, there's the, the REPL, the run, evaluate, um, read. Read, oh, read, evaluate, print loop. Um, so with mobile development, there's this compile, image flash run loop. So you have, um, you have like, you type your code in here, and you hit one of those buttons up here, and then you wait a little while, and then you get this. And this is either a simulator or it runs in your thing. And if you make a change, you kind of have to start over each time. Um, so this is a bit of a reaction to that, um, or, or trying to get around that. Um, also, there's um, cross-platform is a big motivator. So there's Android, there's, there's iOS, there's HTML5, there's now, you know, Samsung has TZen, so everyone kind of has a different phone. So let's, um, and, and this is, everyone's trying to, there, there's many solutions to this problem, um, and I, you know, just have the HTML5 one. Um, but I'm going to use HTML5, but I also want to access the native software and hardware of the phone. So um, like Bluetooth, for instance. And so as part of this little exercise, it, you see like a number changing in the upper corner of the little blue bar, HR17. I'm going to try to relax. Can you guys guess what this is? <laughs> that's real. That's actually quite high. When I was rehearsing, I was seldom over 90. Um, it's just what, you know, what presenting does. Um, so I can access the native hardware. So I'm wearing a Bluetooth heart monitor. And, I'm, and it's talking to the phone, and we're looking at how nervous I get. Actually, if we had skin galvanization, it, we could kind of figure out if I'm lying. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so uh, also um, data transfer, there's, there's some, I'm not gonna get too much of this, this is a smaller part of a much larger project. There's a whole network stack and there's a whole um, marshalling data back and forth from places. Um, I'm not really gonna get in that, I'm gonna talk mostly about the client. Um, but the, the goal is to have apps that are like data aware. So uh, something that can react to um, either things on the, on the phone itself or peripherals like the one I'm wearing or a weather report, a financial report, anything that could possibly be coming in. That's, that's a, a huge goal here. Uh, state management, I'm gonna skip over that until later. Um, and I wanna do all of this, but also wanna minimize the complexity. Um, so I'm gonna run down some precursors. So this is, some of you may be familiar with some of these projects. Um, a lot of them were just vastly inspiring. Um, others, were sort of. Um, so there's, there's Android uh, closure implementations, and uh, one, one version is this. Um, there's like a, a closure REPL, so it, it pr provides like a command line. You can type in some code and evaluate it on your phone. So this is the, kind of the first foray into mobile closure I had, and this is actually how I learned closure. Um, just like when I was killing time on, you know, on the plane, um, you know, just typing things into the, into the thing and seeing the result. Um, so that's one. So that was the first one. Uh, there's, there's some cross compilers. There's Clojure C, which can uh, take your Clojure code and compile it into s the C language, which can run native um, on, on phones and really any C is old school, it can run anywhere. Um, there's Clojure M, which is Objective C, which is the basic the base language for all of Apple's products. Um, so iOS, you program in Objective C. So if you wanted to program in Clojure, there is Clojure M, which is a compiler to let you do that. I messed around with that a little bit. Um, I borrow some API stuff from jQuery. I think everyone does. I don't use jQuery in any of this, but I'm I have to acknowledge it. Uh, but here is where. Uh, the major influences, these last four things. Um, Facebook, I promise never to like complain about it again um, <laughs> because they make some great technologies and they have this library called React which um, was, which made this kind of, took me uh, on a tangent which was really uh, the right thing to do. Um, so I'm gonna talk about virtual DOMs and stuff like that. Uh, there's a, a, there actually is a closure script wrapper around Ohm uh, or round React called Ohm, and it's excellent. Uh, however, I'm not using it. Actually, maybe I got too far before I found it, I don't know. Um, but I think my API is different. There's this project from um, the, the Conj, the Conj is like, people were talking about Closure West, it's like the big conventions where we all get together. I have, I've yet to go to one. But I saw a presentation on this thing called WebFui, which uh, was influential. And then, um, so Lighttable is this kind of text editor that I'm using, and it, it got open source in, in January, and there's, so, but there's also some blog posts uh, Chris Granger, the founder of it, did before he released it. So I'm using it to develop, but also the concepts in it, I took borrowed. <laughs> so I, I'm, it, I'm double acknowledging it. Um, okay, so again, here's the principles. So I'm gonna breeze through all this background and then we're going to, um, then I'm gonna show some, some demos and then for the last like five minutes, I'll just hack around and we can try stuff. Um, so we're cross-platform, so we're using HTML5, the web is everywhere. Uh, this code uses ClojureScript, it uses the, um, the G Clojure, the, with the, the Clojure with the S compiler, um, compiles a very small JavaScript binary and that's what runs. Um, so it's uh, debuggable, testable, because you're just using <coughs> HTML5 stuff. So I find um, this one tool uh, fairly indispensable. Where can I can find it. Oh. Um, so this is called Winery, and it's like right now it's just printing my heart rate, but it's, uh, it allows you to inspect um, the, the actual HTML that's running in the browser. So there's this, what we're looking at here is, a, is the text representation of what's rendering on the screen. Um, and if I bring this back up, uh, how can I do this? Um, let me try. 
Okay, so this, if, if someone hasn't done a lot of web programming, I think it's worth for me to take a, a minute or two and do this. So we, we have the visual representation here, but what it really is to the browser, sort of, um, is this stuff. So there's all these components, and I can use this tool, and I can, um, I can kind of inspect around, and if I, if I highlight over something, it'll, so I'm, that's the actual, rep the non-graphical representation, and when I hover over it with my cursor, you know, we see it there, so it's just kind of a way of inspecting your thing. If, I think people who are doing a lot of HTML development are using these tools already. Um, so I, I leverage these, um, and there's, there's a testing suite called Selenium, which gives you a virtual person who can um, touch the screen and do all kinds of things. You write a script, and they can test. It's, you create a virtual person who touches the screen, does things in sequence. So if you want to do hardcore testing, uh, that's a good way. Um, and again, uh, the dynamic um, nature of this, I'll demonstrate in a sec. Um, and then these apps are event-driven. So we, want, we need to listen to user input. Um, we want to listen to the hardware of the phone. Um, we want to listen to peripherals, uh, for peripherals, do you hear that? Um, like Fitbit and heart rate monitors and stuff like that. And we also want to access data, uh, network data sources. Uh, again, um, underlying technologies. So this is the actual stuff. Um, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Uh, Cordova is a bridge between HTML and the hardware on the phone. Um, Closure Script, which I already described. Line Again, which is a build tool. And then IDE is Lighttable, which you don't have to use. I just prefer to use it. Um, the, the main reason for these slides is just when I post this later, people will know what to look at. All right. So with that, so the last, so what can we build with these um, is what I'm warming up to. Um, so here's just kind of the basic building blocks. Um, we have this, we, we write in Clojure, um, actually we build Clojure uh, data structures, um, and they're analogous to HTML DOM elements. So we have a thing, tag, button, and it can have some content. So it becomes, um, so it's actually the same output as the default uh, XML, closure XML parser. So if, if anyone's ever parsed XML, so you can just take an XML or an HTML file, parse it into this. You can take an SVG file, which I'll do later, and parse it into this. Um, and then this is, the, um, this is the data structure you wind up manipulating. So this is a button. Um, it just has some text in it. This is a button that happens to have a red background, and it also has some different text in it. So an app is just composing these things together. Um, but you can also do custom tags. So a button is just a generic um, HTML thing, but if I want a special kind of button, I can do, um, I can define my own thing. And this is kind of a truncated version. I'll show you the real, the real thing is actually here. Um, so I'm def tagging. I have just the name of it. I can have um, some CSS, which gets, uh, which is the, the style, like the colors, the, the uh, fonts and stuff like that. That gets compiled down and um, just becomes text. Um, and then uh, a node. So it, it's actually, it's gonna, this is either a function, it's one of those, um, it's either gonna be one of these structures itself or a function that returns that. And I'll demonstrate this in a sec. So here it is. Um, so this is actually the button. So let's look. Um, so now we're, we're here, is this font a good size for everyone? Okay. Um, so here we are. So we're defining uh, our target button. Um, and these, this is just uh, CSS, so it's styles, positions, margins, uh, alignment, uh, background. This should all be, be very familiar if you've done any CSS. The only difference is it's in Clojure. So the basic idea is that you merge tags into the definition. Exactly. That you is. You have multiple tags. For yes, and you can have tags that refer to other tags. It's just a way of, compo of, of composing. Yeah. Um, 
And then finally, so we have a lot of styles for this. Um, and so this is not actually one uh, HTML. This, this is not one HTML thing, like a button. It's actually a composition of many. And so it's, I'm kind of nesting things. So now we'll get to where I do that. Um, so in this case, I have uh, this thing called this other piece of data called node. And it's actually a function that returns one. So I'm passing in the, the, I'm passing in the original one, this, and then I can modify it and spit out a new output, which is going to be this. So I'm, you'll, you'll see that I'm grabbing data from that. Um, so yeah, so this, um, so this string here winds up right coming in through this argument. And I'm, I'm adding new stuff to it. So I'm, I'm changing it to a div. I'm putting all these, these are other tags I'm putting inside of it. And then finally, in the label, I grab the content from that and I plop it in there. And so the output is this kind of nested things. So it's actually, uh, it's three divs, which makes that. Uh, is, is that sort of clear? Okay. And if, it, yeah, if anyone has questions, I think it's best to do them like right away um, than, than procrastinate. How do you destroy it? Like how do you scope these things when you create them? Uh, I'm, yeah, I, I'm going to show that. That's when we get to state. That's like the next thing. So no, that's that's <laughs> great that you're leading into it. Um, state. <laughs> um, so we have, and this is a concept in in Facebook React, where you have this. You don't use. Um, you have one object which is a fake version of what the browser sees. So you have a virtual document object model, and then. You have you you um, so the, here's the thing, in HTML uh, rendering the stuff on the screen is slow. Um, when you add a button, when you add something, it's slow. In the more the, the more complex your your the more stuff you have in your application, the more complex it is. So you don't really want the you want the browser to see the bare minimum. Um, you want it to render the bare minimum. So we have this huge um, state model. And we're only selectively rendering the parts of it we, we want to render at any given time. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's all, um, and I think this is where I'm going to start to show how little I know about Clojure. Um, but this is, we have one big atom, um, which is like the root node. We call it app. And then, um, you, then you can just, the state itself just looks like this. So we could have a menu bar. We could have some buttons. We could have some content. And that, so this is, um, this doesn't have to be a one-to-one. -one. So this, this is on the, on the phone, right? It's completely decoupled from rendering. So yes, this is becoming HTML at the end. It's, it's making HTML buttons on, on the phone or on the browser. But you could actually have many renderers. So uh, all the HTML renderer is, is it's, one pro, it's a protocol that has a render function. And you pass it the state, and it renders it. So you could have, um, and you can register new renders with the state. So you could have a renderer that actually um, writes the app on a Times Square billboard. You could have um, a renderer that makes an LED blink. So it's it's um, there, it's not one to one. It's completely decoupled. Um, and he, this is how we change the state. We. It's a little bit like um, like Git. You you um, and it's a little bit like it's kind of a, a weird amalgamation of Git and jQuery. You um, you grab a you use a selector and you can grab on an ID or any attribute any parameter. Um, you can grab an element from that state and you can modify it. And then when you're done modifying, you commit it. And then underneath, it's going to diff it and call a render function and the the concept of the render function, at least the HTML one, it's going to figure out, just like React, the least amount of changes to the browser that it has to make to, to, to make that change. So, it, so it's, it's, not an immediate, it's, a, it's not an immediate mode type of rendering. If you had, an, if you had like an OpenGL renderer, it would just render the whole thing anew every time. But in a, it, you can't really do that in HTML. It's too slow. Um, and then so you, this is just closure, but there's also a lot of convenience functions. So, 
here is me adding a class in Clojure just with associate, and then there's some, you know, plus class and class. They're they're equal. They're equivalent. Yes. What is the type of the thing? Like, are you, do you have a custom map type that you're using there, or like, what is what is the result of the dollar sign function? Um, the result of the dollar sign is one of these. So it's just a closure map. Yep, it's it's a nested map, and it's the okay. same format that you get when you use the default XML parser and and parse oh, okay. in HTML. I, I just was making, I was making yeah. sure it wasn't. Yeah. So everything everything has um, a tag, uh, attributes, and content. Those are like the three main things in the map. But I, uh, I use the map for other things too, extra things. Um, okay, so that's that. Oh, great, okay, I get to try something. Um, so let's, hopefully these will all work. Uh, so here's an example of that. Um, so I have a function here. I, this red box happens to be called, has an ID called state examples. I think I can actually show what that looks is this oh you know I didn't test this before I think I may give me a sec okay this isn't ideal um, I, I may have to go back to this one I will I promise um, okay so um, so <laughs> yeah. So we can, uh, yeah, right. We can we can load in um, HTML. You can just write it in Clojure. Um, you can also load in SVG. So it's so w one one thing that I've been doing a lot is if I have some data and let's say I want to graph it, I can draw like in Adobe Illustrator my graph and parse it in into this same state object, and then I think I can attempt this now. So I'm just evaluating, evaluating the code um, in real time. Sorry, guys. I think it's worth it to, to go through this process. I did have some technical difficulties when I came in tonight. I had to reboot. Um, you get to see light table in action. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm setting up, I'm using light table to set up a web socket between my laptop and the phone itself and I'm going to be able to compi co compile uh, code in real time. Unfortunately, I need to refresh this. Um, I, you know, I have to do this because this is the whole, this is like the whole point of the talk. Skip ahead. It did, and I, I just, that's what I was manipulating here. Um, so thank you. That's the port. Um, try this again. Mm -hmm. Any other advice?
Okay, um, I'm going to I'm going to cruise along. Yeah, I, it actually <laughs> since since I restart yeah since I restarted the app, um, it's I have to explicitly connect that again. But I'm this is kind of a bummer. I'm gonna cruise along. Um, so we is everyone pretty satisfied with how you add stuff and yeah and, okay now how do you make bring it to life um, is the next part. So we can add HTML, we can add SVG, um, we can do it dynamically also. Um, so how do we make stuff happen is the next part. Uh, and this is where behaviors come in. And this, this concept of behaviors uh, comes from Chris Granger's work on Lighttable. Uh, he does it this, very close to this. Um, but all you really have to do is you define um, a behavior. So earlier we had def tag. Um, here we have def behavior. And um, we define the name of the behavior. Here it's test. And then in our tag, we just add a new um, thing called behaviors. And then we have a, a vector of the actual behaviors we want that thing to have. So uh, that, and, and you can add these dynamically as well. Um, yeah. So this one just, um, this one just pops up a, a pop-up. Um, so these are dynamic too. Um, and I'm still hoping that Maybe at the end I'll be able to get this working, but you can define these as you go. Um, you can change them, um, and and that's it. So, what are the behaviors that it currently supports? I'm just trying to make it add them for um, so the let me just so there's the name of the behavior itself, and then there's the event. So this map could get really really long because you can use any of these. Um, there's also there's ones there are ones for keys as well. I'm focusing. These are the the, touch, the screen touch ones. So things like uh, holding down on the screen, tapping, double tapping, dragging stuff around, pinching, rotating, all the stuff people do on the phone. Yeah, a uh, transform is like any. Um, it's 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 either a scale or a rotate. It's like either a pinch or a twist. Um, and then there's <coughs> um, behaviors based on other inputs. So the, um, that whole business with touching the screen is fine, but we can actually have, um, we can s create our own things. The, the system already knows about um, touch this, touch that, but it doesn't know about heart rate. So we have a deaf input, and this is, not really, this, this part is kind of new, but I have a def input and you give it um, a key, which is heart rate, and then and, and you need to give it a schema. So the way that I give it schemas, you just give it a piece of fake data that has the same shape of what you're actually gonna give it. So I'm, the way I'm dealing with, um, in, in the heart rate plugin, it's just a beats per minute, um, you know, it's just a single item with, with a key. Uh, and then, now that I've done that, I can go ahead and use it in a behavior. So this one could have, um, you know, it could have touch, release, all those things, but here it also has heart rate. I, I should say, although I'm not going to talk about server too much, when you do this, it also tells the server that this is a new piece of data that you're going to be getting someday. So make a schema for it and get the database ready and, um, you know, get ready to marshal it. Um, and so that is pretty much um, the conclusion of the uh, of the talk. I'm, I'm I would like to uh, maybe we can ask questions. And while we're doing that, I'll try to like get the actual demo set up. You maybe have to clear a cache on your phone. Or something? It's not that. It's the it's the con it's the connection between my phone and light table is the issue. So, um, but yeah, yes. Um, it's um, it's it's very new. So we just started a couple weeks ago, and it's um, it's closure. It's datomic, and closure. Yeah, just for fun. So uh, you know another thing. This that type of um, you know one one thing about that is not really part of this talk, but this you know these data these schemas are just closure. So, all, so the, the server can read that without any extra work. 
Um, so everything get, that's getting passed back between the phone and the server is just closure data structures. Um, so I mean, this is the clo this is the closure meetup. So why not you know really do it up? <laughs> I think the way to, um, so I'm, I'm not, I, yeah, I'm not using titanium. Um, so I think the best way, if you wanted to use titanium, I think that would be a different renderer. I think everything would be the same, but that would be a different renderer. You would render uh, titanium components instead of just pure HTML. Or, you know, or if, let's say, you had, um, you had an app that's just an OpenGL canvas, then you would just have a different renderer for that. But I think you, you could just use the same data structure. Can you talk a little bit about the internals of your render? Uh, sure. It's, uh, it's based very highly on Facebook's React. Um, so React is an all JavaScript. Um, it's an all JavaScript virtual DOM. So you, you manipulate a JavaScript DOM, and then it figures out the, the smallest path to realizing that image in the browser. So if, let's say you just, you, you change your DOM and what, you do a lot of calculations, you change your DOM, all that winds up changing is like one string and one component. All it does is, is, uh, is set text content or whatever the, the uh, JavaScript call is on that one component. You know, it, so it, it, keep, it maintains everything and just figures out by diffing what's changed. Yeah. You said you're not using React. I'm, so I'm do, so my solution is similar to React, except the, the virtual DOM is in Closure. It's not in JavaScript. Sure. So yeah. I'm asking if you do the dipping. Uh, yes. Work. Yeah. Not as well as they do. <laughs> yeah. So once you've done the dip, how do you map that to instruction and of course move that to change? Um, once, once I changed. Once I, once you've done the dip, you know what's, what's different. How do you then map that? I have a slide for that. I have a slide for that actually that I stole. <laughs> it looks like this. <laughs> so the the way that I do it and the way that React also does it, it's they only do. They only really compare level like level by level. Um, because that's usually how the order, that's usually how things change. If, if, the, if uh, a, a certain branch of the tree, so like let's say this was that um, map I had that was app, this was the menu bar, that was something else, and then these are those children. So this is how that whole thing gets parsed out. We just kind of com compare. And if um, we look at them, and first of all, we look at the, um, the, if the tag changed, um, then we actually create a new component because you can't like switch a tag in HTML. Um, and then if an attribute changes, we just do set attribute. If it's children, if the count of the children changed, we try to figure out if they added something or removed something. And then and there's there's another algorithm to figure algorithm to figure out if there was sorting going on. So we just kind of try to replay, you know replay the, the change from the old version, the old DOM and the new DOM in the fewest amount of steps um, to, you know, to render it. Do you do the, uh, do you apply the diff during the diff process or as a secondary pass? <clears throat> like do you create a diff, do you reify a diff data structure? I, I tried that. <laughs> I'm doing it the first way now, um, where I'm doing it as I'm diffing. Um, what I would love to do is create a, re like create a data structure. From, I actually am not even using data slash diff. I'm kind of doing more, more, I'm, more I'm walking. And, um, and so I think there's a lot of better ways to do the diff. I think that's like one thing that really could use some, some help. It's um, it's it's one major it's one major renderer and it's just the um, the JavaScript runtime on the browser. So 
I'm doing, you know, the, the I mean, it's, it's, is it rendering? Yeah, it's rendering, it's making colorful stuff, but what it's really doing is adding components when it needs to, removing components when it needs to, and changing components when it needs to. Um, so I guess it's, uh, there's, there's retained, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. So I think that's called, there's, there's um, immediate mode rendering, which is like OpenGL where you run, you render the whole thing at once, and then there's retain mode rendering, which you keep stuff around and you only render the changes. This is the retain mode. Yeah. So you said that uh, you started this before you heard about Ohm. You said you're not using Ohm. But I mean, Ohm has really gained such traction. I just wonder if it's worth going back. I mean, you talked about how you're doing all this stuff. Yeah. You know, reproducing what Facebook and React is doing and stuff on yeah. your own. Ohm is already doing that quite well. Are you aware that David Nolan is sitting in the back of the room? Uh, who's that? The guy who created Ohm. Oh, no way. <laughs> Hi, David. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, you should just. I should hang out with David, is what you're saying? What I would suggest, look, you just spent the last three questions have been about how to do your, your diffs. Yeah. Class, and you're basically reinventing the wheel. See? Exactly. And this is why I didn't spend a lot of time on that. Okay, but, yeah. you know, Ohm has reinvented the wheel already better, right? I'm sure, yeah. This wheel is round. Yeah. No, I'm sure. In fact, I, you know, I, I, um, I, I, of course I acknowledge it, but I got pretty far before I found out about it. So it's just, I think that part, that, that diffing in part could just be swapped out. I mean, it seems like, in, I'm thinking all software, anything that's unreliable and doesn't work should be replaced with something that's reliable and that works. I think I did it okay, but if I would certainly evaluate um, you know the ohm stuff and see if it it works better and actually I think it's the um, I, I do like the principle of having the virtual Dom be closure what what do you what do you think so your your virtual Dom is job is well it's just it's just react and the only reason we stuck with that is I'm just interested in that problem yeah right and they're they're working on that they yeah. have lots of devs and they're constantly optimizing it yeah so I'm just I'm just not concerned with that that problem. That's yep. a lot of work. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm not too into that problem either, to be honest. <laughs> I yeah. It's not that interesting. It's important, but it's not that interesting. Yeah. Um I have a question about the hardware compatibility. Yes. So when you would go from like the iPhone to Android or whatnot, is it a different renderer or which pieces change? It's so it's HTML five. Um, so it's the same renderer. Um, and so it's using, and I was talking about the um, Apache Cordova stuff before. So what that is just a layer of abstraction between the HTML, which is um, platform in, um, independent, and the underlying hardware, which is platform dependent. So it's just a bridge. So the, the, um, the actual, like the Bluetooth stuff, I have to rewrite that or, um, Fortunately, someone else wrote it. And so there, there's like a lot of plugins for Cordoba and they're platform specific. So you may have a diff, like in, in some cases, it's the same plugin that someone's ported to like every device, like the, the older, more robust ones, that's the case. In some cases, you have to mix and match. In some cases, you have to write your own. Um, but yeah, the idea is you need, you know, you, if you really want to do something um, in, you know, on the hardware directly, um, on iOS, you've got to do it in Objective C, and on Android, you've, you've got to do it in Java or one of the other languages that it has. Um, well, this I, I give myself like a B plus here, um, <laughs> but I think we could wrap up. Just one last suggestion about trying to get your right table to work. Um, if I remember, you have to like copy and paste that web service thing to create. Yeah, that's that's what I. Yeah, I've, I've been kind of going into um, into this thing. But I wonder if it's not saving right or something. Yeah, it's, you know, this is one of those Murphy's Law things. Um, I'm actually happy because when I came in and plugged in the monitor, my screen went completely dark. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like, this, this is like, yeah, this is okay. I think what, probably the best thing for me to do at this point is to, um, do like uh, maybe an annotated demo in, in, in a video format. Um, also, I'm, I'm having difficulty connecting to a network and 
I think that's part of my problem too. Um, so I think probably the best way for me to do that part of the demo is maybe like in a video format and then you know I can just post it and put the link on the meetup site or uh, Eventbrite or wherever else it was. Um, so the I, I would say what's working really well is the um, just the creating nodes, the modifying them, and the adding behaviors to them. And um, there's again, like the in the um, for example, the, the touch library. Like I didn't. That's an open source library. You know, that's that's all another project. So. Yeah, it's it's. Re I mean, this is really an integration project. That's why, like, to for me to pick up and start using Ohm or or React or whatever is it's no big deal, um, because I've had um, many many different libraries, and I prefer when they com when they compile with G closure, when they when they work in advanced compile mode. That's the one little pickiness I have, and React does not. David, does it? I, I, there was I kind of got it to work, and then yeah. it didn't work consistently. I just gave up on it. Yeah. That's that's sort of what I, I figured. So you just you have like an externs file. Externs, then we have you can just concatenate it to the front of the file. Yeah, yeah. So stuff like that. So the, I I mean it, it real this whole thing really is about integration. It's not I and I sh wish I had a slide about this. Like my goal is actually to make something very uninnovative. <laughs> that's it. Is that okay? Uh, oh, did you try the local mode? I think you had a. So I need to use the I, so it's it's getting this to connect to this so this, this local host is this. Right. So I have this and my internet right now is a USB bridge. It's kind of a yeah it's not, it's it's high level of difficulty. Sorry guys, but I will do that video. I promise. Um, oh, one other thing. So this is not um, this hasn't been released yet. I, I would like to release it soon. I'm, I'm not ready, um, but if anyone uh, is interested in like seeing the code or working on it with me, I'd, probably, I'd, I'd rather just do it old school for a little while, just with a small group and not like a public thing. So just um, you know, introduce yourself, um, and I'll give you my card, and we'll just do it old school. Yeah. Like, what do you like about it? So light. So um, I'll just do it very briefly. Um, light table is, I think, the best thing. The best place to start is with, and this is the, these are the like principles that I wanted to show anyway. But you have it's going to evaluate your code as you type it. So for instance, in, um, if I do the test. I don't know why I did an atom first, but it's just evaluating that. And then if I go on to a new line, it's going to evaluate. You know, it might error for a little while, but it's it's kind of this real time REPL. Um, and that, I think that's that's what it really is. It tracks function values. It tracks your function values too. Yes, it does. Yeah, it's just totally dynamic. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, I think it's maybe a, a year or two old. Um, it's fairly new. It was open source in January. It has, um, you can write your own plugins now. And it has, uh, I, I can use it pretty well because it's all about tags and behaviors. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, let me just create functions. That's not a very interesting one. but. Um, I'm so used to closure script. It's just print, right? To print? Yeah. Okay. So the second that that evaluated, it printed out there. That's the idea. So it just, it's const your program is just constantly reevaluating as you type. And it's, um, 
it's just interesting, yeah. I mean, it's very similar to the REPL, except it's just one control return you don't have to hit. And, and you don't have to, you, you, you don't have to be, <laughs> it's more than that. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, it's, uh, but you don't, this insta REPL mode, you don't have to be in that mode. You can use it more like a REPL. Yeah. I, you know. Everything works on that, like, right swing out panel there. Yeah. So, like, you hit, like, what is it, command space or something? Command space, yeah. And then you just type stuff. It just happens. You just type stuff, yeah. And so I can do, if I want to, it's just really fast, and I can navigate the, I can search for a file in my project. Um, it's, it's, it's really quite nice. It has, um, you can kind of change its, so yeah, there's nothing in there, but you can kind of change how it behaves as you go. Um, so well, the first thing I did when I came in was this, or the opposite of that. Um, so it just you know changed the behavior, in that case, just the font, which maybe isn't too interesting. But you could just change how all the editors were um, as you go. And you're, you're never really out of this context of you and closure. You're always in that, um, you're always in that space. Because this is just closure. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you. So we'll probably hang out here for a few more minutes. If you have any more questions, you know, feel free to come up. Um, otherwise, we usually, every time, go to a bar around the corner called the Broom Street Bar um, to continue talking. And that is um, it's at the intersection of Broom and West, West Broadway. The easiest way to get there is to follow somebody else. Um, so, and people will sort of, you'll, you'll see. If I, you don't know where it is. I just got lucky. Oh, great. Yeah. Hey. Hey. In that case, then. <laughs> okay, just real quick, just real quick. I needed you to run interference. That's like why magicians have like the assistant so they can, can figure out the next trick well. Okay. Um, so I'll go down to state examples. Um, so yeah, I can just cruise around. Um, so there's this thing, state examples. Oops. That did not work. Oh, it did a bunch at once. Um, let me try again. So this is showing you in real time visually what you're doing. Ha this is, yeah, that's, that, and that's what I was <laughs> trying to demonstrate the whole time. Yeah. but. It's, it's how it actually happens. So, um, so uh, you know, I showed that slide earlier of the, the Mac thing where you type the code in and then you hit play and then you wait, it comes up. Um, so this is the, the counter to that. This is real time. Um, so let's see. Um, so I just, in one step, I put, um, I just executed this block and it put a green border around it. It changed the background color to gray, and it added a, a button. Um, so not too interesting. I could just keep adding. Um, <clears throat> and then here, let's see. Change the colors of all the buttons. Um, and then let me, yeah. And then, so this was the SVG thing that I loaded before. Um, so there's no, in this library, there's no difference between manipulating a vector drawing and manipulating a, um, an HTML element. So I can, it looks like I'm about to change it to orange and make it smaller. Um, and then I can, if I want to know what I'm dealing with, I can always, um, Print this. This is even maybe more important than changing things. Is being able to inspect what you're doing in real time. So I just printed out what that tag looks like. 
you know, what it has in it. Um, and there's, um, what else is there? Oh, there's like, um, there's unlimited undos. So every time, and this is just natural, uh, since I'm <laughs> saving the state, um, I can just kind of play it back. Um, I could actually, so I'm just going back in time, literally. I could give the app a timestamp, and it will return its state to that moment in time. And so that the, the reason that's important is for concurrency. Let's say you have a multiplayer game or a multiplayer application. You can share a, the state, or that's how it's designed to share the state around. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, what else? Um, Does that, that suffice, or is that, that's not enough? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good.